All right. This lesson, we're going to emphasize uh, intimacy. Yeah, we were t talking about that. A close relationship with God. Not, not distant, but really close. Yeah, just uh, bonded together. And then, second, this week we'll discuss simplicity. You know, this, we're looking at our schedule and finding out how busy we are, and we just got to figure out how to, what to get rid of those things so that you'll have some empty time, some, some free time, because it's important. If we're always hurrying and we're always busy, we, it's, it's just really easy to ignore God. But we need to start being with God, focusing on Him more, spend more time with Him. Just take some things out of our schedule. And today, we'll learn about to be quiet, silent, and solitude, solitude meaning you just spend time together because we want to spend time with God. Yeah, th there's just so many pressures, so many uh, on our time, and we just want to be alone together with God. So these are our eight steps. We started with intimacy. Remember this verse, Philippians 3.10? Paul was writing this. And it was his desire. What was it? He wanted to know him. Him. Who's him? Jesus. All right? How do we know? We're, we're going to read some more. I can know him and the power of his resurrection. Who, who was raised from the dead? Jesus, right? Yeah. All right, that's the point. Him is Jesus. His resurrection. That's him. That he rose from the dead. And the fellowship of his, same him, his sufferings. Jesus suffered? Yeah, a lot before he died. On the cross, he was separated from God, from his Father. Yeah, that was awful. That was real suffering. Just, he suffered for you and for me. Being made conformable to his death. His, 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 him. They're all talking about Jesus. That's all, all those pronouns. So that you know, oh, they'll say, oh yeah, God, but which? Oh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. This is just specifically talking about God the Son, Jesus. How do we know? Because of the resurrection, because of his suffering, because of his death. God the Father never died. No. God, Holy Spirit never died. None of these were raised from the dead. The Son rose from the dead, okay? That's, that's the important part. That's how you know who that's talking about. Yeah. We should know the Father, yes. We should know the Holy Spirit, yes. But the point of this verse is emphasizing that Paul wants to know Jesus, and we should also. We should have that desire. He wanted to know Jesus. We need to know Jesus Christ. Today, we're going to emphasize silence, to be quiet. Yeah. Solitude. It means to be alone because you want to be alone. Sometimes we feel alone, but we don't want to. We feel lonely. But solitude means you want to be alone. Yeah, say, hang on, you guys. I, I don't really want to be around anybody right now. 
I want to be by myself, alone. It's good for Christians. How do we know? We'll see. Jesus himself wanted to do that. It's not, a, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Was Jesus wrong in that? Never. He never did anything wrong. You say, so, sometimes he wa Jesus wanted to be alone. Okay. And I want what Jesus want. I want to, I want to copy what Jesus did. Some people, they enjoy being around people all the time. Yeah. It's like, not me. No, I'm. I'm. I want. I. I like to be. My dad. He did. He didn't want to socialize. That's an example. He's. My dad. He preferred being by himself. Uh, he had. The everybody's got different personalities, but. It's important. To be alone with God. For some people, it, that's easy. Yeah, they 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 spurn fellowship. Some people are hard. They they always want to be busy and around other people. But it doesn't matter. Jesus wanted to be alone with God, and we should copy that. Man, this ver this is our verse to emphasize. Psalm 46, verse 10. The first part says, be still. No, not, that means not busy. Stop being so active. And know that I am God. That's important. We need to focus on that today. Be still. Stop being so busy, talking so much, and yeah, put a bookmark in it, take time out, just leave it, and know that God, to know that he, he's there. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, please, touch our hearts. Help us to know, ha have this goal to be quiet and alone. Why? To have more time with you. Not just alone to waste time, no. But the goal here is to have time with you. To know you. Please, help us to examine our hearts. To know how to change. How, how, how to do this. What, what, how are we supposed to do this? Help us to know. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, the first thing, stop. It's interesting. Ch Psalm chapter 47. It's interesting to look at the word Selah, S-E-L-A-H. It shows up in this psalm, chapter 46. It shows up three times. And what does it mean? It means to stop or pause, take a break. It means to think, meditate, contemplate, reflect. It means to think, examine, say, hmm, what are the implications of this? Let me think about this deeply. That's important. In chapter 46, verse 1 and 2 and 3, talks about many things. God is our refuge, our, pla our hiding place, a place where we can, we can rest, and it's our strength. 
is our very present, present help in times of trouble. Uh, question. Yeah. Do you, you ever feel like you're in trouble sometimes? God is our strength. He's our hiding place. In the next verse, it says, therefore, meaning because of that, we will, we will not be afraid. Because he is our hiding place. He is our strength. It doesn't matter that, the tr that this trouble is coming over me. We don't have to be afraid. Then it says, what, even if the earth is moved, and if the mountains fall into the ocean, it doesn't matter if the waters, you know, or the, the, there's a storm. It doesn't matter if the mountains shake. And then it says, Sila. And he says, stop. Think about all these things. It doesn't matter if the, what, whatever the trouble is. You see a mountain and it falls into the ocean. It quakes. There's a storm and the waves are going over the top of you. None of that matters. God is our hiding place. He's our strength. We don't have to be afraid. We need to think about that. Many times it's normal. Like a hurricane comes and destroys all, you know, the land, or like in Kentucky recently, right? Maybe. Uh, You know, a flood happens, the rain's coming down, and the water comes up, and we don't need to be afraid. We'll feel afraid, but we don't have to, because God is with us. He's our hiding place. He's our strength. It doesn't matter if there's uh, natural uh, disasters. In the next verse, chapter 46, verse 4, it says, there is a way. Verse 2. Oh. Th there is a way. Whereof shall make glad <coughs> the city of God. The holy city of the tabernacle of the That concept, it's beautiful, right? The streams, the make happy, the city of God. Wow, that's beautiful. It's peaceful. It says the holy place and the tabernacle. You know, the little tents that they worship God of the Most High. Beautiful language. Peaceful. And then it says, God is in the midst of them. That, that's the tabernacle. He, he's not, he, he's not move, moving. He will help them. That right early means quickly. Yeah. That he will be there. The heathen, the people without of the world that don't know God, that without God, they rage. They kingdoms move. The point, the city of God is there. The stream runs through it. It's peaceful. It's beautiful. But the world, they, they're angry. The, the kings move against them. 
And the next verse says, he, God, uttered his voice. He just spoke. And the earth melted. The Lord himself, that special king of the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. Remember, we discussed that name before, that title. The, the, the word host means armies, and he's the boss of the armies. The, the angels, right? He, God, is supreme. He's the boss. He, it says, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. It's our hiding place, our resting place. Then the word sila shows up. It says stop. Think about that. Think about the, the, the city here with the stream running through it. It's a beautiful place. God's in the midst. And then the people of the world, all the kings and the armies, they're all, they rage and they're going to attack the city of God. But God is going to speak a word. <coughs> he's going to say stop and he's going to conquer them and they're going to be destroyed. Consider that. He, God, is with us. He is the boss over the armies. He, the God of Jacob, is our refuge, our hiding place, our place of rest. Think about that. Meditate on it. Hmm. Well, how does that apply to my life? No matter what happens. Maybe rain comes down, the floods come up, maybe the there's lightning and the earth, you can hear the thunder. Maybe there's an earthquake. The mountain falls down. And it, maybe the, there's waves that are washing over you. But don't be afraid. It's okay. God is our strength. It doesn't matter if people are attacking us. Don't, don't worry about that. God is with us. He is our strength. He speak a word and conquer them. Many times people will uh, attack Jerusalem and people try to destroy the city of God. Sometimes God punished them. He let that happen. But many times God said, nope. That's not going to happen. Not today. Just He just dismissed the army. He conquered them. We need to learn how to trust him. He says, stop. Think about those things. Sila. The next verse, verse 8, talks about the future. The first the first verses, you know, things that are happening normally, right? And we, we experienced, we, we saw those two. The second verse, four through seven, talked about wars and people attacking each other. And those things happen, right? We experience that also today. Even right now in Israel, yeah. You know, other the, the countries around them, they want to destroy them. Yes. But they trust God and his plan for them. This verse, 8 through 11, talks about the future. It says, Many behold the works of the Lord, and that he destroys... 
to make us warm to seek and to be strengthened with to strengthen the body and cut it cut it the spear in something you know somebody will have a spear and God will say no I'm going to destroy that spear burn it the chariot Yeah, they're telling the horses to go and the chariots are going really fast in the middle of the battle. Right. Next verse 10 says, Be seated and know that I am God. I will be exalted. more verses he says stop and can think about what I just said it's good training it's a good habit to get into for all of us There's, it's not enough to just read the Bible you know and say oh I'm done okay I've, I've completed that goal it's important to stop to take a break and say Oh, I need to think about what I just read. What does that mean? How do I apply it to my life? Right? There. Okay, it's important. Psalm chapter 1 says, says to meditate. Yeah. He used that word, meditate. It says, on his law does the, the righteous man meditate day and night. Please, don't be confused about the word meditate. It's, it's a religious word, yes. It, but there's other religions use that word meditate. But when we think about meditate, it doesn't mean to have our brains empty. You know, not think about anything. Just sit there and not, and, and have an empty head and just, just try to be empty here. It says to think about something. Think about God. Meditate. Means to think about His word, His law. Say, hmm, let me think of how all this fits together. It's important. The word sila shows up in the Psalms and it says, stop. Take a break and consider what you just read. That's very important. It's a good habit to get into for us to know God better. The second point, our journey into silence, quietness. It means to make a plan. can't do it you can't do it immediately you know you need to, s to spend some time saying let's calm down you know because we try to stop and say oh mind stop thinking about all these different things you need to need time to slow down sit and focus and be quiet. Just stop being so active. Stop 
doing things, working, stop. You have in your mind on all these lists of things to do and don't or what you need to accomplish and take a break, stop, put a bookmark in it, separate yourself. It's, it's hard. You know, as we're traveling through life, we want everything to get there fast. And he says, stop, don't do that. Here's an example. You're reading the Bible. You read, you read a little bit. And after you read it, stop and you say, what does that mean? What's the word mean? Yeah, be, be slow. Don't, don't be in such a hurry to get through it. Take it slow. Every word has a meaning. What does this mean? What does this mean? What does it mean to me? How do I apply it to my life? Take it slow. Slow down. Don't be in such a hurry to get through it. Ministry of silence. If you and I are involved in some kind of Christian ministry, we should do this. Every Christian should be involved in some kind of ministry. If we, as Christians, we're, we should have a heart that's not, not, on, not on our surface. Say, I know what happened. I know what's happened in the world. I know what the, the science is. I know what math is. I know what English is. I know all these different things. But I just know them on the surface. No. If this person's a Christian, the, the, the surface is, is just, just the beginning. They, that can't help people. For example, the person that's not saved, he, does, he, he, he may not know science. <laughs> he doesn't need <coughs> math. He doesn't need to know what's happening in the world, the news. If I'm a Christian, a surface Christian, and I know all these things that are happening, uh, you know, all the politics and everything like that, that doesn't help that person's soul. He, he doesn't need that. How am I going to serve him? How am I going to help him? He needs salvation. His soul needs Jesus Christ. He needs to understand, hmm, I remember myself before I was saved and my heart was felt so empty. I felt alone. I, felt there was, I had this guilt and this you know, dread, this burden on me. I remember before, before I was saved. And I can see that in my, wh what's happening with him. Maybe I can have a discussion and talk to him about it. Say, you and I, we are the same. We, I know we're two individuals, but we have a lot of experiences in similar. And you have a soul that needs salvation. You need Jesus. Your heart needs to be deep, not on the surface, your, your understanding of God. The ministry of solitude. To be alone and use that time to help Christians have a deeper relationship with God. Am I getting this right? Think about Jesus himself. He's our example. The book of Mark. Maybe you think about Mark. Right, it's you, you know about Matthew. It emphasizes the law, the prophets, and all these prophecies that were fulfilled in Jesus. That book, that gospel, helps the Jewish people understand, wow, this really, Jesus really is the Messiah. Luke, you know, 
it emphasizes Jesus is the healer. He's the son of man. He's human. He worked. He got tired. He felt pain. He felt hunger. All these different things. He was human, but he was still God. John emphasizes Jesus is the son of God. He uses eight names. Oh, seven names. Seven miracles emphasizes Jesus is the son of God. Mark is different from those, uh, those three. Mark is a short book, and it moves really fast. It, it, it you always see Jesus and busy. Many times the word shows up. Great way, okay. Immediately. Many times the word straight way shows up in Mark. Jesus is doing something and then straight way, immediately after that, he goes and does something else. And when he's done with that, Straightway, he goes and does something else, and then he goes again, straightway. He's always busy in, in the book of Mark. Mark emphasizes Jesus is a servant. He's busy all the time. But the first chapter, verse 35, Jesus is busy that one day, but he wakes up early oh, to, to go out and be alone with God. Say, wow, it's important for Jesus to have time alone with God. Even though he's busy all the time. Also, Later in the book, Jesus and his disciples, and he's explaining things and teaching them, and he sends them to, out to preach and to heal and to help people. And when they come back, he, they're excited and they tell them everything that they've been doing, and people are following them, and Jesus says, hey, wait a minute. Come aside with me. Let's go out. Just to, just to all of us alone. Leave the crowds behind. And we'll go to, let them go to another city. The point? It's important for the disciples to have time alone with Jesus. They can't be busy all the time. They need to put a bookmark in it. Stop. Leave their ministry and be alone with God. Be alone with Jesus. Jesus encouraged the disciples to do the same thing. Here's a question for you. Do we need to do that? Say, oh, that's, that, that's old. We don't need to do that today. We're, we're, we're too busy today. We don't have time today. We need to keep serving yeah, God is coming soon, you know? Say, whoa, hang on a second. That doesn't change anything. These disciples, the time, they had time alone with God. They enc Jesus encouraged the disciples, saying, time is limited. The Christian life, Jesus only lived 33 years. Jesus with, was with the, only with the disciples three years, and time was limited then. But we need to apply that lesson to our life, too. We need to copy that Jesus got alone with his disciples. Okay, letter E. We need to be alone to listen. You know, we can pray and tell God, oh, this God, we have these things that we need. 
who you need time to just be quiet and focus on him. I know myself, when I pray, I got this long list of things that I pray about. And I'm just as guilty as the next guy. Say, I need to stop telling him about my list and just focus on him. And let him just impress on me what he wants for me. That's important. I need to pray, yes. But I need to allow God time to work in my heart. And a good habit is to write down things that you think down. It doesn't have to be every day. But sometimes we need to, when God impresses something on our heart, we need to write it down for yourselves. Think about what you're writing. Put your soul in it. Put your heart in it. Write, write these things that, you know, make them simple, make them short. That w When God impresses something on your heart, put it down there. Think about that. Let, let that help you. Do this for yourself, not for other people. For, you know, this is not for other people to read. This is for you. Yeah. yeah. They, they call that a diary. Yeah. yeah. It's two words. D-I-A-R-Y. Diary. How many times people have a book? Other people will read the diary. Yeah. Yeah. Journal. What's the point of all this? To know God better. To know God deeper. How? To be quiet, be still, and know that I am God. The goal is a more close relationship with him. How? A s to have a simple life, to clear, clear your schedule so you can have time together. The third... What do we do? We want time alone with God. Just to focus on God. Read his word a little bit. Stop. Think about what you read. Think about what God's like and what you just got what was just revealed to you from God's word. How do I apply it in my life? Maybe God will impress upon something upon you. And you need to write that down for yourself. Not not for other people to read, no. If if we don't if we're so busy and we're hurrying around and we won't have time. That's just a surface relationship. That's what you'll get. You you can't help other people. You'll so you'll be so busy, you'll be like a robot. See other people and, and you you won't see their soul. You will say, God, how can I help them? And God wants you to know that that person needs save, uh, salvation. They're hurting. They need comfort. And you'll know how to do that. You'll know how to serve them. Say, I understand how this, how this person feels, and I want to help them. A Christian doesn't stop. He doesn't take a time out and spend time with God himself, the Christian, 
the disciples. Remember the disciples, they used to take the time out and spend time with Jesus. Jesus said, stop. Let's, let's, and, and we need to copy their, their example, the disciples' example. That's important. So let's pray.